The night the ocean climbed the mountains, the 1958 Lituya Bay tsunami story. The night of July 9, 1958 in the remote wilderness of southeast Alaska, began like any other, calm, quiet and cloaked in the endless summer dusk. Lituya Bay, a long fjord-like inlet carved deep into the mountains by ancient glaciers, lay still as glass. The water reflected the snow-capped peaks like a mirror, disturbed only by the occasional ripple of the tide. For the handful of fishermen anchored there that evening, it was just another night in the land of bears, ice, and silence. But beneath that tranquil surface, nature was about to unleash something so terrifying, so unthinkable, that even seasoned seafarers would struggle to believe it. The setting Latuya Bay was no ordinary harbor. A narrow entrance only 2,000 feet wide opened into a vast body of water nearly 7 miles long. On both sides, jagged mountains rose more than 3,000 feet straight from the shoreline, their slopes lined with ancient spruce trees. At the far end loomed Gilbert Inlet, fed by glaciers that clawed at the mountains. Those mountains for thousands of years had been holding their breath, the trigger. At 10.15 p.m., the earth began to move. A massive magnitude 7.8 earthquake shook the Fairweather Fault, a crack in the earth that ran right through the bay. The mountains groaned and the sea heaved. For the men aboard their small fishing boats, it was as if the world itself had suddenly tilted. And then it happened. High above Gilbert Inlet, on the steep face of the mountain, a colossal chunk of rock, 90 million tons of granite, broke loose. In a single instant, the entire mountainside collapsed, thundering into the narrow bay below. The impact was like a bomb. Rock ice and soil crashed into the water with unimaginable force, displacing billions of gallons in seconds. The bay convulsed, and the ocean began to climb. What rose from that impact was not a wave in the ordinary sense. It was a wall of water so immense it stripped entire forests from the mountainside. Measured later, scientists would confirm it, 1,720 feet tall, the tallest tsunami wave ever recorded in human history. To imagine it, this was a wave taller than the Empire State Building taller than three Eiffel Towers stacked one on top of the other. It didn't roll gracefully like ocean swells, it exploded outward, shredding the land, tearing trees from their roots, scraping the earth down to bare rock, and it was heading straight for the boats anchored in the bay. The survivors' accounts. Among the fishermen that night was Howard Ulrich and his son, who were asleep aboard their 26-foot wooden boat, the Edry. Awakened by the earthquake, they rushed on deck just in time to see the impossible, the water rising, the shoreline vanishing, entire forests being swallowed. Howard later recalled the moment, the wave went up the slope, taking trees, taking soil, just scraping everything. It was like the whole mountain was melting into the sea. The Edry was lifted like a toy. Howard clutched the wheel while his son screamed in terror. The boat rose higher and higher, carried by a moving mountain of water. He thought surely they would be smashed to pieces against the cliffs. But luck, or fate, intervened. Instead of breaking, the wave hurled their boat over the crest and into the chaos beyond. The Edry rode atop the tsunami, somehow surviving the fury that obliterated everything else. Not everyone was so fortunate. Another boat, the Badger, vanished without a trace, swallowed whole by the wave. A third vessel, the Sunmoor, was tossed like driftwood, its crew barely escaping alive. When dawn finally crept over the mountains, the survivors stared at a landscape transformed. Where thick forests had once stood, only bare rock and mud remained, as if a giant hand had scraped the earth clean. Entire swaths of shoreline had been shaved off, trees ripped away up to 1,700 feet above the bay. The bay itself looked alien, icebergs, logs and debris floated in the water, circling aimlessly. For days afterward the sea continued to churn, restless, as though unwilling to return to calm. Howard and his son, though shaken beyond belief, lived to tell the tale. Their testimony, along with the few other survivors, became the foundation for one of the most extraordinary geological case studies ever recorded. Science Behind the Horror What happened that night wasn't a normal tsunami. Most tsunamis are triggered by undersea earthquakes that push the seafloor upward, displacing water across wide distances. Latuya Bay's monster was different. It was a mega-tsunami, created by a landslide of unimaginable scale. The sudden plunge of 90 million tons of rock into confined water produced a vertical displacement so extreme that the ocean itself seemed to defy gravity. Scientists still marvel at it today. A freak alignment of geography, geology and timing. 
If not for the handful of witnesses who survived, it might have been dismissed as myth. Legacy of the Giant Wave The Latuya Bay Mega Tsunami remains etched in history as the tallest wave ever recorded by mankind. No storm surge, no ordinary tsunami, no tidal wave in any ocean on Earth has ever reached its scale. For the survivors, it was not just history, it was personal. A night of terror when mountains fell, when the ocean climbed higher than skyscrapers, and when life hung by a thread. Even today, when scientists and adventurers sail into Lituya Bay, they can still see the scars. The barren slopes where the waves scraped the mountainsides stand as a silent reminder of nature's raw and unforgiving power. And somewhere, deep in the quiet waters of Lituya, the bay waits, patient, timeless, knowing that one day, the mountains may fall again. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.